Believers who are saved by God's grace, Christians who follow Jesus Christ, must have the attitude of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is with the same nature of God, but did not consider to be equal with God, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, and died on the cross. The Eternal and Unchanging Word of God One Story One Story 88 Philippians, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 1 to chapter 4 Paul's epistles, which begin with Romans, has a characteristic for each epistle, explaining belief and life of faith focusing on Jesus Christ and about salvation and life after salvation from various perspectives. The book of Philippians along with the books of Ephesians, Colossians and Philemon are the epistles of Paul, also called the prison epistles and was written while Paul was in prison. All of you share in God's grace with me. The Philippian region was the first city of Macedonia and a Roman colony where they arrived through Macedonian man's vision when the Spirit prevented Paul from preaching in Asia. Paul obeyed the Spirit and met Lydia, who served God as a dealer in purple cloth. And the Holy Spirit opened her heart and the Philippian church began in her house. The relationship between Paul and the members of the Philippian church was like a family in faith. That is why Paul was saying, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who begun a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you. Since I have you in my heart, for whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Paul's love for the Philippians was because their partnership in the gospel and because they share in God's grace with Paul. Because of the gospel, we become one in grace. Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Paul trusted God in all circumstances. For this reason, Paul said, that his suffering served to advance preaching the gospel, and he was able to spread the word of God more boldly and fearlessly through faith in the Lord. And Paul said, if he preaches in any way, even if he preaches Jesus Christ through trouble, if it is Jesus Christ that is being preached, he will rejoice and continue to rejoice. This is because Paul's earnest expectations and hopes were not for Paul himself to be revealed, but for Jesus Christ to be preached. That is why it is beneficial to live and die if only Jesus Christ can be preached. Although Paul was still living in the body and was called with the mission as a preacher of the gospel on this earth, but his mind was no longer on this earth and with Christ. Nevertheless, Paul knew that remaining in the body was necessary for the progress of joy and faith of the Philippians until he is called to God's side. Those who are commissioned and called are not living by their own will, but by God's will. Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Paul told the members of the Philippian church, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And firmly said, For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had and now hear that I still have. The treasures are in jars of clay and the value of the earth of clay is evaluated by the treasure. But the jar of clay is still in this world. So just as the world killed Jesus Christ, the treasure, the world will also hate those who do not belong to the world and who follow Jesus Christ. Therefore, 
believers should take the suffering of righteousness for granted and not fear it your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus so with the very attitude of Jesus Christ Paul said if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ if any comfort from his love if any fellowship with the spirit if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like minded having the same love being one in spirit and purpose do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility consider others better than yourselves each of you should look not only to your own interests but also to the interests of others therefore god exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father this is the cross and glory of jesus christ we too can live the life of the cross on this earth and will surely participate in that place of glory for it is god who works in you paul told the members of the philippian church continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling the salvation of the believers have already been completely received but the work of salvation continues even now and when we finally go to the kingdom of god eternal heaven through death of the body the salvation we have already received will be completed therefore we must keep the perfect salvation received by grace with a fearful heart with sincere faith we cannot say that we do not need to repent even if we commit a sin because we have already been saved it is god who works in the saved children of god and for that god's pleasing will he made god's children set a wish and act god works in us to will and to act according to his good purpose therefore god's people must live under the guidance of god so paul said do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of god without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that i may boost on the day of christ that i did not run or labor for nothing you too should be glad and rejoice with me paul wanted to share with the members of the philippian church as a family in jesus christ paul wanted to be cheered by receiving news about them and wants to send epaphroditus who desperately loved the members of the philippian church epaphroditus was paul's brother who was sent from the philippian church a person who worked hard together and was a fellow soldier with him taking care of paul's needs he longed for all of them and was distressed because he found it out that they heard he was ill and almost died but he was healed because god had mercy on him so paul quickly sent epaphroditus to the philippian church to relieve the joy of the members of the philippian church and to relieve paul's anxiety it is said that epaphroditus did not take care of his life even when he almost died for the work of christ like this the relationship between paul and the philippian church overflowed with love and joy surpassing greatness of knowing christ in the past paul lived by putting confidence in the flesh he said that he was circumcised on the 8th day of the people of israel of the tribe of benjamin a hebrew of hebrews in regard to the law a pharisee as for zeal persecuting the church as for legalistic righteousness faultless however paul said but whatever was to my profit i now consider loss for the sake of christ what is more i consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing christ jesus my lord for whose sake i have lost all things i consider them rubbish that i may gain christ and be found in him because paul's righteousness was not from the law but only from the faith in christ that is from the righteousness of god although paul lived in this world he clearly knew what was most valuable i press on toward the goal to win the prize for which god has called me heavenward in christ jesus paul said so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead not that i have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect but i myself want to take hold of that for which christ jesus took hold of me 
Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize, for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Speaking of the race of faith, it was certain Paul received faith, but was speaking of the good fight of faith as a person who received that salvation. Our citizenship is in heaven. Paul said, Join with others in following my example. This does not mean to follow Paul. Paul said, Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things, telling them not to go on the same path as these people but follow Jesus Christ with Paul. So Paul said, But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like glorious body. Our citizenship is in the kingdom of God. In other words, we are from there and we will go back there. Therefore, Paul was able to say, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the identity of the people of faith, the people called by God. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. We must understand this verse well. Paul's words, I can do everything through Him who gives me strength, does not mean that Paul can do whatever he wants by the power of Almighty God. That is why we have to look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We must not separate one verse, one chapter, one book, nor the Old Testament and New Testament. The Bible is one book, from Genesis to Revelation. It is one story, therefore this verse must be understood in the context of the entire Bible. After Paul said, the God of peace will be with you. And after he said, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. He said, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Therefore, Paul said, I can do everything meant I became able self-sufficient in any circumstances. That is why Paul was able to say, I have received full payment and even more, and then said, And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. It was not the abundance of having everything in the world but the self-sufficiency that was enjoyed only through Jesus Christ even without the worldly things. That is grace and capability. The story of the journey of faith by losing everything and treating it as excrement to receive Jesus Christ and be found in Jesus Christ by regarding everything that is beneficial in the world as harm for Jesus Christ and believing that the knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ is the most precious. The story of the journey of the saved believer's life as a foreigner in this world continues.